Hey, I'm Mark Romanek. Stick around because you see us on the water all the time on Fishing 411 television. Today is something just a little bit different. We're going to do a test ride video on my personal boat, the StarCraft STX 2050. It's one of my favorites. The SDX 2050 is 20 foot 2 inches long and it has a 100 inch beam and its maximum horsepower capacity 250 pounds. There's a number of reasons why the STX-2050 is my personal favorite fishing boat, and a lot of them play to the fact that this boat is good at all kinds of fishing applications. If you've ever watched Fishing 401 television, you know that one day we're fishing bluegills, and the next day we might be fishing king salmon or muskie or another species. So we need a boat that is very applicable to all those different kinds of fishing, not just one or two species, and the STX is a great multi-species boat. We're going to start our description of the STX-2050 here at the back of the boat because this is where a troller is going to spend an awful lot of time. First thing that jumps out at you, he's got this really nice splash well back here. The splash well is plenty deep to be able to keep waves on the outside of the boat where they belong. The other thing about the trance that I really like is there's enough room here for a kicker motor. You can put it either on the starboard or on the port side of the boat as you choose. Also, this little bench that I'm sitting on here houses a dry storage compartment, but more importantly, it has a gargantuan live well back here, which is big enough for species like muskie or trout or salmon, as well as walleye bass, whatever you want to fish for. I'm staying here in the cockpit of the boat, and there's a couple of things that jump out here right away. Number one, vinyl on the floor. As far as I'm concerned, a fishing boat needs to have vinyl on the floor, and the reason for that, vinyl is the only kind of surface on a floor that you can keep clean and keep maintained nicely. A fishing boat floor is going to get trashed, let's face it. If it's vinyl, it's easy to clean, easy to make it look like it's brand new. The other thing is that this boat has seating capacity for not one or two fishermen, but there's seating capacity for up to four people to ride in comfort, and I think that's also important, because a big water boat like this, you're not going to fish with this one or two guys, you're probably going to fish with a couple buddies, which means you're going to need seating for at least four people. You know, the STX-2050 has a lot of standard features that I think are pretty cool. One that is exceptionally cool is in my hand right here. It has a washdown pump, and you can see I can shoot a serious stream of water out there. It's just ideal for washing down the floors after you catch a fish and you get slime on the floor. Maybe you're fishing live bait and you're getting crawler gunk and that kind of stuff on the floor. That little washdown pump right there has got it going on with the STX-2050. Storage is the other issue in a fishing boat. Most fishing boats simply don't have enough storage to put all the stuff you would use in a typical season of fishing. The STX has got a ton of dry storage compartments. There's two over here in the back of the boat that I use all the time. There's a smaller one back here that I use for small objects. Um, I'll put my uh, weight systems, that kind of stuff in here. I also put tools in here to keep my screwdriver, my pliers, that kind of stuff handy as well. And then moving just a little bit forward, there's another really convenient box here. And of course, you can see this is the one that I use to keep my planer boards in. Planer boards are kind of bulky and they're hard to store in a fishing boat. This is the perfect place. I put my port boards on the port side. I put my starboard boards on the starboard side. And the STX is perfect for this because it's got these drive storage compartments on both the left and right hand sides of the boat. You know, one of my pet peeves about fishing boats is they usually don't have very convenient places to store batteries. In a boat like this, you're going to need a bunch of batteries. I've got a 36 volt electric motor on my boat, so that means I need three deep cycle batteries. And I also, for my cranking battery, I don't run just one. I typically run two cranking batteries to be able to run all of my accessories without worrying about running short on battery power. The STX 2050's got plenty of, of space right here in the bottom of the boat to mount not two or three, but actually up to five batteries which I think is a super cool feature. You don't see that in many multi-species fishing boats. Another one of the cool things on a fishing boat is where do you mount fishing accessories, things like rod holders. A lot of modern boats, it becomes very difficult to mount these accessories. There's just no place for them. On the STX 2050, you've got these nice wide and flat gunnels. The boat comes factory supplied with four pieces of track. And inside of that track, like I have on my boat here, you can mount all kinds of accessories. Rod holders, of course. You can mount downriggers here if you want. Tool holders, that type of stuff is going to mount onto this track system. The beauty of the track system is when you need the accessories, 
accessories, you can add them. But when you don't need them, you can take them off. Let's say one day I'm trolling and I need my rod holders. The next day I'm jigging and I don't need rod holders, I can remove those rod holders and stow them. So track mounted systems have got it going on and guess what? It comes standard with the STX 2050. The STX 2050 is also a walkthrough windshield model. And what I like about a walkthrough windshield is that it gives you a lot of protection when you're running in rough water. But also, it's got some other unique characteristics. For example, it gives you all these unique places to store things. Like underneath both consoles are these little catch nets. And what you can do is take bulky items like a life jacket like I have in my hand here, and you can stow them up underneath and it keeps them handy so you can get at them quickly if you need them, but stow it out of the way where they're not on the floor and you're not walking around on them. So this walkthrough console here on the STX gives you a great protection from the elements and great storage capabilities. The driver's console on the STX is straightforward, to the point, has all the features you need and nothing you don't. The thing that jumps out at me is I like the way the steering wheel is mounted because it allows you to see your gauges clearly. Obviously, you've got a lot of windshield here that gives you protection from the elements, and it's tall enough that when you're driving, you don't have to take your ball cap off. Your cap's not going to blow off because the wind gets diverted over top of your head, which is nice. Over on the right, there's plenty of room here for your GPS sonar unit. In fact, you can mount up to a 12-inch unit on this console, which has really got it going on. All the switches are easy to see, easy to function, and they're all lighted. And the reason why that's important is because when you index a switch, the light goes on. So let's say, for example, you turn the bilge pump on and you forget and you leave it on, you got a little reminder. That light tells you that the bilge pump is running to remind you to turn it off after you've used it. I'm sitting up here on the raised casting deck for the STX, and I like to refer to this area as my office because I spend a ton of time up here. Anytime I'm casting or anytime I'm live bait rigging, I'm probably going to be up here on the bow. What I like about this is not only does it provide you a nice elevated platform from which to fish, but it gives you an enormous amount of storage up here as well. Right down through the center, we got rod storage, which is perfect because I can put up to 10 rods and store them right down the center line of the boat and keep them safe and sound. I also have additional rod storage up here I'll explain in a second. But more importantly than that, I also have my dry storage for my fishing tackle. There's boxes up here where I can put all the Plano boxes that I need for not just one day of fishing, but an entire season worth of fishing. Of course, I got flat gunnels up here as well, so I got room to mount more track mounted systems. So, if I need to put rod holders up here, I can. I've got room to mount my electric trolling motor, which is up here. Plus, all of the functions to control my electric motor are up here, and I can also control my functions on my outboard. Say, for example, I'm fishing and I get into a little shallow water, I can actually trim my motor from the front of the boat, which means I don't have to go to the back of the boat just to make that simple function. The STX is well thought out, it's in a great design, and like I say, this is my office. I love to spend a lot of time up here fishing. This control panel up here in the front has some unique functions. Of course, I can look at my battery power so I can see where my electric motor batteries are doing, but also some other neat little things like I can adjust my live well, I can turn my live well on and off, I can turn my bait well on and off from up here, and little things like courtesy lights. I can flick on the courtesy lights. Now I've got light in the front of the boat if I need it. There's also an accessory switch up here. Say, for example, my cell phone's dead and I need to charge my cell phone. I can do that right up here where I'm fishing. The other thing that I think is so cool about the STX is every nook and cranny is used for storage. Check out these little integrated storage compartments here. They're just mesh net in the front of them to hold goods in there, but all kinds of oddball items fit perfectly in here. Just the kinds of things that you would otherwise have a hard time finding a place to store in a boat. But what more than the perfect place to put that marker buoy? When I need it, it's right there at my fingertips. Not only does the STX have a live well and bait well at the back of the boat, it also has one up here in the bow. And the cool thing about having a bait well on the bow is that if I'm up here jig fishing, I need a minnow, I don't have to go to the back of the boat to get it. It's right here handy. It's on a recirculated timer so I can keep these minnows fresh and lively all the time. It doesn't get any better than having live bait at your fingertips. You know, the other nice thing about having a big front casting deck is that it gives you room for additional rod storage. We talked about the rod tube down the middle, but there's also tubes that go down the side of the gunnels here where you can store additional rods. I got them strapped in place, so all I have to do is disconnect the strap, and then I can pull my extra rods out here. So I've got room on the port and starboard to take an additional four rods. So all total, I can carry 12 rods on board. There's not very many days of fishing that I need more than 12 rods. You know what, I promised that I'd show you a little bit about how I rigged my personal STX 2050. Let's take a look at some of the details that make this fishing boat all mine.
One of the fishing accessories that I put on my boats that I think is really unique is made by Cisco Fishing Systems. It's their electronics brackets. And what it allows me to do is mount my sonar anywhere in the boat that I need it and then adjust that sonar so I can see it for wherever I happen to be fishing in the boat. For example, in this situation, I can tilt it down like this if I'm running and I just want to put my cover on my boat for the going home at the end of a fishing day. Or I can index it all the way up to here like this so that I can see it while I'm actually fishing. I can also rotate the unit left and right so that I can see it from one corner of the boat or another corner of the boat. No other electronics bracket is that adjustable. The Cisco Fishing Systems electronics brackets, oh, they're awesome. Another piece of fishing equipment that I use virtually on every single time that I hit the water is my electric motor. I have a MotorGuide XI5 electric motor on here. This is an autopilot electric motor, so once I put it down, if I've got a compass heading that I want to troll to, I can follow that compass heading. It works beautifully for me for things like trolling, open water trolling, walleye spinners, that kind of stuff. You can control it with a key fob here that's in my hand, or if you prefer, you can use the foot control, so it really becomes a personal preference which one of these systems work best for you. Personally, I like the key fob. I can hang it around my neck and anytime I need to make an adjustment to the electric motor it's right there handy for me to do. You know besides the autopilot features of the XI5 there's other really cool things that this electric motor does. For example let's say you're going down a shoreline and you're casting and you catch a fish. At that instant that you catch a fish I can index the anchor button on here. When I hit the anchor button the boat will stop in that exact location and hover and stay right there. So while I'm landing that fish the boat doesn't drift away or move so when I scoop that fish in the landing net I can release that fish or put it in the live well and immediately the boat is in perfect position to make another cast to the same school of fish. That anchor mode, I use it constantly. It's a, one of the most unique features that you'll find in an electric motor and I tell you it's right there at the touch of a button. If you're old school, you probably have an electric motor on your boat that's the push-pull cable style, the ones where you use a foot control to index the electric motor head. You probably like them because they're instantaneous. When you move your foot, the head moves instantly. Well, I tell you what, these do exactly the same thing. The wireless models now are so responsive that you just hit the button and they move instantly, and so you have that same type of instantaneous control to be able to make the boat do exactly what you want it to do when you're fishing. The other thing that I think is noteworthy is to talk about the quick disconnect bracket that we have on our XI5. The electric motor is something that I use all the time. But let's say, for example, I'm not going for a day of fishing. Let's say I just want to take the family out for a day of recreational boating, want to do some tubing or water skiing, something of that nature. I don't need an electric motor on the boat for that. I can pull one pin and take this whole electric motor and disengage it and take it completely off the boat, stow it, so I don't need that extra weight on the boat. Let's talk for a second about rod holders. I already mentioned that I like track mounted systems. Track mounted systems allow me to put a multitude of rod holders on my boat for whatever application I may need. I use a lot of these tube holders like this. I use them for things like inline planer boards. And what I like about these is I can adjust them into any angle that I might want to get my rod tip staggered so my lines don't cross. So these Cisco rod holders are very nice in that situation. Cisco also makes a really nice rod holder here. I'll describe as a cradle rod holder. And what I can do is I can lift this up and index it to the angle like that. When I drop my rod in it, I can control the tip up and down this way as well. I use these a lot for things like flat line fishing. Uh, maybe a bottom bouncer straight out the back of the boat is what I would use those for. So cradle rod holders are always on my boat. Tube rod holders are always on my boat. I've also wired my STX2050 to be able to allow me to use downriggers. I have electric downriggers and I mount them right into the track that I use for my rod holders. So when I need those electric riggers, all I have to do is slide them into the track, tighten them down, plug them into the wiring systems that I've already wired into the boat and I have electric downriggers. When I don't need them, I can disconnect them and I have a very clean system. I don't have any wires dangling out or anything like that. So it's a perfect system for me to be able to use downriggers when I need them and take them off when I don't. I've also mounted the Lowrance VHF radio on this particular boat, and the reason I did that is because when you're out fishing, it's really nice to be able to monitor the fishing channels and see how other fishermen are doing. With a VHF radio, you can talk back and forth to other fishermen freely, and you can share information on the water. It's also a really nice safety feature. If something were to happen to you out in the water and you needed the Coast Guard or you needed immediate emergency assistance, that VHF radio is your call for help. Certainly last but not least, we need to talk about the Evinrude G2 E-Tech that we have on this boat. This happens to be the most sophisticated outboard in the world. It does things that no other outboard will do. Now keep in mind, this is a two-stroke outboard, not a four-stroke. Why is two-stroke important? For one, two-stroke gives you more power, gives you more torque, gives you more horsepower, gives you more top end speed and performance. This particular engine is a 200, but it's actually rated at 225 at the prop. That's substantially better than you would get in a competitive motor. Well, what else is important about 
about the E-Tech. Well, let's talk about fuel economy. This engine gets tremendous fuel economy, much better than four-stroke and much better than other two-strokes that are out there. So we got that going for us. Well, what about emissions? Well, believe it or not, this engine actually has less emissions than any four-stroke in the world. In other words, this engine burns cleaner than any four-stroke, making it super efficient in that regard as well. So we got a clean engine. We got a high-performing engine. We got an engine that gives you great fuel economy. What more could you ask for in a fishing boat? This particular engine also has five years of unscheduled maintenance. Five, not one, not two, not three, but five years of unscheduled maintenance. In other words, you turn the key and you go fishing for five years and don't worry about it. The G2 Evinrude E-Tech also has something called fly-by-wire throttle control. And why that's unique is because what happens is the old linkage systems that are traditional in fishing boats like this is done away with completely. What you do when you hit that throttle, the second that throttle moves, you have instant power, you have instant engagement with the power of the outboard. The other thing that's cool about that is you don't have all of these cables and stuff that have to be routed. So when you look at the back of the boat here, you'll see that it's very clean back here. You don't have those traditional pistons and wires going all over the place, so it makes a very clean rigging system them on the back of the boat. This is the way all outboards will be designed in the future, but right now you can only get it in an Evinrude E-Tech G2. A concern that we hear about quite often about two-strokes is they need oil reservoirs, and that's true. You have to have a place to put the two-stroke oil, but with the G2 Evinrude E-Tech, it actually is right on the engine. There's not a separate oil reservoir. Even better than that, it's tied into a wireless gauge system. Now, what that does is that on the gauge, right on the console, you can see instantly how much fuel you're burning. You can see how much two-stroke oil you're burning. You can even tell what your miles per gallon is. So you can adjust your trim up and down and your speed up and down so you can get the maximum miles per gallon. So you can get the most value for your dollar while you're fishing. These gauge systems tied into the oil reservoir system that's built right into the outboard, it's state of the art. Nobody else is doing that. And that's why the next time you buy an outboard, you need to seriously look at an Evinrude G2 E-Tech. But the Evinrude G2 E-Tech gets better. How about winterization? If you're a kind of guy that likes to fish late in the season and you winterize your outboard, you're pretty much done fishing for the year because you had to fog the carburetors and you'll have to go through a whole regiment to unfog those carburetors to be able to use that engine. With the E-Tech, uh-uh, you don't have to do that. It's a keystroke function that allows you to fog the carburetor and then unfog the carburetor with nothing more than a keystroke, which means that I can winterize my outboard and then a week later when the weather gets mild, I can go out and use it in a keystroke and start it and use it no problem whatsoever. No other outboard out there does that either. Well, I think you'll agree with me that the STX 2050 by StarCraft is an awesome multi-species fishing boat. Happens to be one of my favorites. Of course, I'm a little biased. I've owned a few of these boats. If you'd like to learn more about this boat, I recommend that you go to fishing411.net. The reason you want to go there is it'll give you all the details that we outlined in this video and more details, and it'll give you a price for how you can purchase this boat yourself. This is a demo. It's going to be on the market soon. You'll want to snap it up before it's gone.